Hi, I'm Daniel from Goldline Construction. In this video, we're going to answer the question, what is a minor dwelling? So a minor dwelling is actually a technical term for a secondary dwelling. And according to the Auckland Unitary Plan, there are three zonings, three residential zonings where a minor dwelling, a technical term minor dwelling applies. And those three zonings are residential large lot, the rural zones, or the single house zone. So those are the three zones where a minor dwelling applies. And the minor dwelling being a secondary dwelling has a maximum of 65 square meters. Um, now of those three zones, two of them, the rural zones or the residential large lot zone do require a resource consent for the addition of a minor dwelling on those sites. However, a single house zone does not require a resource consent. As long as it meets all the standards um, laid out in the Auckland Unitary Plan, you can put a minor dwelling maximum of 65 square meters on a single house zone. Now the other zones in the Auckland Unitary Plan, the other residential zones are residential mixed housing suburban, residential mixed housing urban, and um, terraced housing and apartment building zone. And those three zones don't have the regulations for a minor dwelling. Those three zones are actually allowed up to, well, sorry, the residential mixed housing suburban and residential mixed housing urban are allowed up to three dwellings with no maximum size, as long as they meet all the standards on the zones so it means you're not restricted to 65 square meters you can have 100 200 square meters if you like and up to three dwellings before you have to apply for resource consent so to answer the question what is a minor dwelling technically it is a a, a secondary dwelling on one of those three auckland zones which has a maximum size of 65 square meters however it's a term that's obvious obviously uh, banded around a lot and is also used for a granny flat and um, so a lot of people use it even even if your zone is a residential mixed housing suburban or residential mixed housing urban or a terraced housing apartment people still use that term although it's not technically accurate uh, in those zones it's just referred to as an additional dwelling so there you have it now um, I'm Daniel from Goldline Construction and I actually teach on this information. I've got a seven step process that I take people through. Um, we, we actually have a challenge, it's called the Minor Dwelling Challenge. And we, I teach my seven step process and the seven step process is basically going to be step one, taking you to the Auckland unitary plan maps viewer and checking out what your zone is what your property zone is and looking at the standards that apply to your property zone step two is taking you to the auckland council geomaps website and uh, bringing up your property zone on the geomaps website and having a look at any issues that might be on your property whether that's um, an overland flow path or a flood plain or whether it's um, assets like stormwater pipes and sewer pipes on your property we look at all of those things and then uh, step three is having a look at a few examples on the Auckland Council Geomaps uh, website of properties that can fit a standalone minor dwelling and properties that can't fit a standalone minor dwelling or, or aren't likely to be able to fit it. Uh, step four, we take you to the Auckland Development Contribution Estimating Tool and we have a look at uh, how much the council are actually going to sting you for development contribution fees because um, every property when it's subdivided or when it's um, developed initially um, it has a fee that's paid to council for putting one dwelling on it so any additional dwelling that you put on an existing site is going to require um, development contribution fees to be paid to the council step five we go through and have a look at the different service connections that are going to be required so that's things like sewer stormwater water power and phone internet and potentially gas as well and then step six we look at the actual building costs 
Uh, so it might be foundations that we look at, we look at the actual building costs and we look at any other things that are going to be required like landscaping, fencing, maybe, maybe driveways, concrete, um, that type of thing. And then step seven, we actually string it all together. I've got um, what I call the gold line feasibility checklist. Um, or the minor dwelling feasibility checklist and it's a spreadsheet that I've come up with with a whole lot of costings on it for the different things like service connections um, like where we can put the cost for development contribution fees and I go through the whole process and at the end of it at the end of step seven we should be able to work out a, a fairly accurate ballpark estimate of what it will cost to put a minor dwelling on your property so hey look let's just uh, cut to a clip and have a look at some highlights from session one uh, from the last uh, minor dwelling challenge that we did in 2016 um, the auckland unitary plan came into effect and what that did was that opened up more opportunity for development um, especially around major routes in Auckland, so bus routes, train routes, those public transport routes. Uh, typically those are the routes that have a higher density um, and there's a few different zones which we'll go into shortly. But um, those zones have a higher density of housing so you're able to fit more dwellings on those public transport routes and that was the idea behind or one of the ideas behind the Auckland Unitary Plan to increase the housing density because Auckland is so spread out compared to other countries around the world. If your existing house was built, these are a few of the things with the Auckland Unitary Plan, if your existing house was built before September 2013, some of you may not know this, some of this knowledge is not that common knowledge because the Auckland Unitary Plan's only really come into effect since 2016. But even in a single house zone, which is a zone kind of designated for one house, one dwelling, um, you are able to, believe it or not, get up to three dwellings on that zone if you do it this way. Okay, so this is the, the Auckland Unitary Plan Maps Viewer. So what we want to do here is we want to put our address up here. I'm just going to, going to use an address, and you would have seen it in the, um, the guide that you can download off the Facebook page. So we're going to go to 29 Second Ave. But what we're going to do now is we're just going to scroll down to zones, because the zone is probably what more applies to the type of development that we're looking at. Um, and here you can see you've got residential large lot zone, you've got residential rural and coastal settlement zone, single house zone, which is the one that we've just um, been looking at. And then you've got mixed housing suburban zone, you've got mixed housing urban zone, and terraced housing apartment. Now here we go, we've got minor dwellings. Now just while we're at the, at the minor dwellings, I just want to explain that a minor dwelling is, is basically a secondary dwelling. And the difference between a minor dwelling and just another dwelling is going to uh, be subject to the actual zone that you build it on. So minor dwellings are only apply to a, a rural zone, a residential large lot zone, and a single house okay, zone. So this is the homeroom. All right. So you got your pen handy um, to write this down, or just watch the replay of this video. Um, so what you need to do is confirm what your property zone is. Confirm what your property zone is. Lock it up on the Auckland Unitary Plan Maps viewer. Second, you need to check to see if it has an overlay. Does your property have an overlay on it? Is it going to require a resource? Third, you need to check to see if it is in a zone in a, a stormwater management area, flow one or flow two on, on the property. Does it have one of those on it? Um, because again, the implications there is it will require a mini, a mini resource. So there you go. That's it for tonight. That's your homework. So. Hey look, if you're an Auckland property owner that is interested in putting a minor dwelling or looking at, at least at the feasibility of putting a minor dwelling on your existing property, um, have a look under this video, have a look at the link, um, it's www.minordwellingchallenge.co.nz. Uh, go there, have a look, see when our next challenge is, and uh, I think it would be really great if you signed up to the challenge, it would take you through the whole process to see if you can uh, get a minor dwelling on your property. Thank you.